Okay, so welcome back to another video. In today's video, we have just a uh, simple computation problem, and that's to compute the inverse sine of 2. Uh, arc sine of 2, in other words, you want to go with that um, in other wording. So, um, again, this is just a simple computation problem. Um, before I actually jump into solving this problem and getting to the step, here's something we would like to pay attention to. Arc sine of x, um, inverse sine of x specifically, it ranges from the closed interval between from negative 1 to 1 within the real numbers. So there's no way it's possible for it to um, ever touch the y value of 2. So that would have to um, imply by saying that solutions have to exist in the world of complex numbers. So hence, that's where the whole process of trying to solve this computation, we're going to actually actually we're going to have to um, use complex analysis from what we learn, especially using the um, exponential, the um, the exponential functions um, in terms of the relationship of the um, complex trigonometric functions, and then solving our solution um, in order to get the solutions from there. So, um, in other words, let's actually just jump in. So let's actually um, define this. Um, our given our um, inverse sine of two. I'll just call this um, z equals inverse sine of 2. Now if I want to um, solve this by itself or for um, the value, just for the value on its own, then I can just take the sine of both sides. So I get sine of z is equal to 2, right? And hence, using the definition in terms of the complex um, exponential formula, which I said that earlier, then we could use that definition and say and set that equal to two, which is defined as um, e to the power i x subtract that, or in this case, since we're dealing with z, so I'll put that as z. So e to the power i times z subtract that with e to the negative i times z divided by two i. And then we set that equal to two. And now we can actually just um, solve this and solve to get our, um, our variable z on its own. So um, I can just multiply the two i to both sides. So we have e to the power i times z subtract with e to the negative i z and equals to four i. Then I can just subtract four to both sides and then we actually get a, um, some, a uh, quadratic equal, well not really a quadratic equation, not yet. Let's see, minus for i equals zero, then I can actually multiply e to the power i z to both sides of the equation. That still be zero over here, and okay. And then from here we can actually get in similar fashion of a quadratic um, quadratic polynomial. So let's see. So this will be minus. So just move the um, it's commuted over here. So I can just move this for i then e to the uh, i z. Then if I multiply e to the i z to this one, this will just become minus one then equals zero. Okay, so now we can actually solve for our solutions for z such that satisfy this. Um, obviously, the takeaway is that we can actually just use the quadratic formula to solve for specifically e to the power i z. So here, e to the i z, then we set that equal to negative b. So in this case, the coefficient would associate with four i uh, plus or minus the square root of, um, let's see, so 4i, so you squared that, so that will become um, positive 16, well, negative 16 actually, because i squared. So negative 16, then subtract that with um, minus 4 times a times c, so let's see, that's a negative 1, or yeah, and then here, so that's, that's 1 over here, so then this will just be um, minus, then minus uh, 4 times 1 times 1, so that will become a plus 4, and then divide by two times a, which it's just two. Let me fix this. Let me fix the centering over here. So then we have e to the power i z, and so that's just equal to. Um, well, let's just simplify what's in here. So for i, then plus or minus the square root of negative sixteen plus four. That's negative twelve. So um, if I were to solve this, then this will just become. Um, let's see, four times three. So that'll be just two times i, and then multiply by the square root of 3, and then divide it by 2. And then if I could actually just simplify this out even further, then um, they both share an i const, um, the imaginary unit, so I can actually just factor out the i. So then this become i times, and then 2 uh, plus or minus the square root of 3. 
So it'll be shown here. So next I can actually just take the natural log of both sides, natural log of e to the power iz, then equals the natural log of, um, how about I actually write the, um, the coefficient in front of the imaginary unit, two plus or minus square root of three, multiplied by i, right? And then over here, this is just the L and E is just canceled, so it's just i times c, then equals, um, so I can actually just use our rules of natural logs and write this as a sum, the i is in, um, is with the product of the co of the um, coefficient in front of that the constant rather. So this will just be the natural log of um, two plus or minus the square root of three, then plus the natural log of i. And now we actually know a little property that um, e to the i and then multiply by pi over two, then plus um, two pi times k is equal to i. Um, for um, k can be some integer, similarly because of the, the whole rotation. So it's always going to equal i for um, every pi over two, um, add or subtract with one full or subtract one rotation. So it's always gonna equal i. So I can actually just substitute this back into here. So we have i times z then equals ln of two plus minus square root of three. And then if I take the natural log, replace this with here, then, um, Let's see, this is just, um, I can actually just distribute the, um, the i into, the, um, into what's in the parentheses. So this would be plus um, i times pi divided by two, and then multiply the i over here, so plus i and then times two pi k. And then last thing I can do is I can actually just divide i to both sides and just get our z, which is what we're trying to achieve over here. So therefore, z, is equal to, z is equal to, so this will be i in the denominator, so I can just multiply i to both the top and bottom, so that becomes, this has become a negative i, then ln of two plus, and then minus the square root of three, then divide the i, so plus pi over two, and then plus two k pi for k is, um, k, k is in the integers, like so. All right, and there we go. All in final answer. See, I told you. Uh, solutions has to be in the world of complex numbers if we analyze the um, the value just closely. And there we have it. So yeah, uh, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.